Welcome to the World History One Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10-second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to World History One Lecture 2.1 on the Foundations of Civilization. And the foundation of American civilization is this guy. Arnold. No, Schwarzenegger is not the foundation of American civilization, but he is interesting. You see, some of us know Arnold as an athlete, and some of us know Arnold as a movie star, and some of us know Arnold as a politician. So the question becomes, how do we define this guy? Is he the muscle man from his time bodybuilding when he became Mr. Universe? Is he the lone warrior in his first major movie role as Conan the Barbarian, strong but just? Or is he the machine programmed to do either really bad or really good things like in The Terminator? Or perhaps he's the family man trying to reunite with his long lost brother and twins? Or he's the politician, the leader, the governor. Well, it's really hard to define Arnold, and more importantly, is there a pattern here? Does he go from brawn through different types of movies that get more sophisticated to the governor? This is the same thing we will see as we start talking about civilization. Defining what a civilization is is going to take us time, and we're going to know to look at many examples to understand how civilizations start, how they develop, how they get to their height, how they fall, and how they rebuild. With that said, let's go to the next slide. Before we understand the cycle of civilization, we have to be able to define what is a civilization. Well, to have a civilization, you need two things. The first thing you need is culture. Culture is the distinctive features of a group that are learned behaviors. And a really good example of this is the skating culture. And right there, you could see our skate park at Mount Trashmore. Now, borders have a very special culture. They talk a certain way, they dress a certain way. When they're skating, there's an etiquette. There's a way in which you skate so you don't, you know, get the other skateboarders mad at you. That's a culture. Civilization is urban culture or culture found in a city and its surroundings. So what you need is you need to have culture plus an urban environment to have a civilization. Go to the next slide. Now that we've defined the term civilization, let's look for characteristics that we find in most civilizations. A characteristic is a feature or quality belonging typically to a person, place, or thing and serving to identify it. Well, what does that mean? Let's look at an example from our country. Here we have the United States Constitution. And as you've learned, we use the Constitution to organize our government and to basically limit how our government will operate. We've written down the laws regarding how our government runs. That is a characteristic in many modern Western countries like the United States. Places like Canada and Germany and Great Britain and Australia have all written down how their government will be organized. That's a characteristic you will find in almost all Western countries. So what are some other characteristics? Proper geographic setting, organized government, development of urban society, organized religion, division of labor and class structure. To get examples of each, we're going to look at the United Kingdom, England. England sits on an island, it's well protected, proper geographic setting. England has a monarchy, a queen, and parliament. The commoners who run the government, that's an organized government. 
England has an urban society in many places. London, Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds. England has an organized religion. It's called Anglicanism. There's actually a Church of England. England has division of labor. There are all different types of jobs in English society. And England has the most famous class structure of them all, the British monarchy. There's royalty, and then there's everybody else. Those are the characteristics of a civilization. Go to the next slide. Civilizations don't just look a certain way, they actually affect how people live. An effect is a change that is a result or consequence of an action or other cause. And you can see that in our original example about the United States Constitution. We have an organized government, not just in Washington, but in our city. And one of the laws they've passed is the don't swear on the oceanfront law. That's part of a system of laws created by our organized government to keep the peace. So there are many effects of a civilization. And these are some of the effects. You have growths of settlements into city-states, kingdoms, and empires. We create a system of laws, just like we talked about in the example above. You have the growth of different types of people working in different types of jobs. You have artisans, scribes, tradesmen, and you even have international trade. People are writing things down. People are making things and people are trading with other places. Finally, you have the creation of defined roles for rulers, priests, nobles, merchants, and slaves. We have individual jobs that are important to the civilization that have a defined need. This is what they're doing for a reason. Go to the next slide. So now we've defined the term civilization. We have uncovered the characteristics of civilization, and we understand the effects of civilization. Now it's time to look at the cycle of civilization, and we will spend the majority of this year analyzing this cycle. Civilizations are established. They start. Civilizations develop. They grow. Civilizations sustain themselves. They can be around for a very long time. Civilizations develop differently depending on where you are geographically or where you start your civilization. Civilizations can rise to great heights and fall to great depths and civilizations can rebuild. Looking at history through this cycle, you will not only understand the facts, but you'll be able to apply these facts to understand how humans have grown from 3300 BC to 1500 AD. I hope you enjoyed this lecture, and I'll see you in class.